Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I've got a topic in my head. It's a topic for this video. Uh, but I'm going to attack it and talk about it in a very different way. And it may not be apparently obvious what's going on until you get to the end. So it's, that may be a hook to stay all the way to the end of this video. But trust me, there's a point. I, I actually have tried to talk about this about three times. And finally, I thought I'm going to do it this way. Uh, a little bit of a, it's, it's a different way. Um, it, so the first takes were very negative. And I decided, you know, I'm going to go hard in the opposite direction. Hard positive. All right, so here it goes. Um, if you were to tell me, you know, what kind of job uh, would be just super fun? What kind of job would be fulfilling? You'd wake up in the morning and you're like, you yeah, are excited. I've had lots of jobs. Obviously, you know, I've run comic shops for a good portion of my life. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm like many of you, you know, when I was very young, I, I worked in a, I worked, I, you know, I worked retail. I worked in a video store. I never worked in food service. And I, I feel like there's probably some, you know, bit of my character that uh, is missing there as a result. I think that I would have learned something there. But uh, working at video stores is, is, it was exactly like Clerks, by the way. It was completely like that. Um, I've worked in tech. Again, as you know, I've done a lot of consulting and I've tried to help people and I've gotten into some pretty big gigs. And uh, a big thank you, by the way, to all the people who wished me, uh, wish me well in the current gig that uh, I'm doing. And, and thank you very much. It's uh, it's fun. It's demanding. It's uh, overwhelming, but I'm learning a lot, and that's uh, that's good too. And I'm do I'm taking the steps, step by step by step, to getting a, a shop open up here in Texas, and which will be fun. But uh, so all those things are are happening. I've also volunteered a lot of my time uh, teaching kids uh, art. I'm not an artist, but I can teach them some some small things, and I've you know I I've, I've, I find it a lot of fun. So I've done a lot of things in my life, and and more beyond. Um, uh, you know, lot, lots of lots of little gigs. I'm. I would have been more successful in different aspects of my life if I would have picked a lane and stuck with it, I think. But but learning lots of things uh, has taught me a lot of different lessons. I've been able to carry them over. But I always have this question, like, what's the ideal job? What's a really great job? And the uh, the answer that I have, or, you know, one thing that I keep coming back to is, you know, it'd be a great job, comic book editor. Um, yeah, a comic book editor would be a great job. Now, by the way, not counted in this, what I'm talking about right now is money. Okay, so I'm just just put that aside for the minute. You know, just pay because obviously the, the pay for uh, comic book editorial jobs suck, and so that wouldn't be good. And I like to be paid a lot of money, so you know, I, I when I consult, I don't do that for free. I'll just put it that <laughs> put it that way. Um, but uh, you know, the comic book editor, I think, is a really great job because you get this high level, this project manager view of you know, a part of history, a, a, a part of these properties that are world known, where you get to shape the stories. Now, you're not the writer. I mean, being a writer would be a hell of a lot of fun, too. So being the artist, you know, but being the editor would be extremely special because you get to you get a, to, to see all these books. You get to get all these ideas. You're surrounded by creative people. I mean, how cool is it that that almost every time you pick up the phone, you're talking to somebody who is got a creative vision and they get to tell you about it, whether it's a story or whether it's an art style or, or, you know, a coloring technique or everything else. Imagine an office where as an editor, as a project manager kind of person, you get to cultivate amazing creative talent. You get to pick a lot of the people that are going to fulfill this broader vision of the titles you're managing. You get to, curate books you get to coach and mentor people you get to find somebody who's early on in their career and you get to say hey you know what uh, i've read a ton of comics in my life and here's uh, here's a pretty cool job you know here's here's some stuff that went on back in the 70s and you've got that same kind of aesthetic so here's like 80 books why don't you go read those books and and let's think about those and, and let's make a cool callback to some of those things in the comic up here and and then let's get let's tease something in this book and like a year later We'll pay it off over here in this other place, and people, the fans, will be like, "Oh my God, it's so so cool!" And then you, your audience are people who care about the books as much as you. Like, how amazing! I like, you know what? I'm I I would be so in love with the fans and the customers. I would I, I would just be, I would I, as a retailer, it's been so much fun to talk to the to talk to fans to talk to customers to get their ideas to get their theories to get see their excitement it's just their excitement feeds my excitement it's wonderful as an editor it's even better 
As an editor, you get to see all of these things. You get to experience all of these things. That that horn that you might have heard in the background there was not for me, by the way. Um, just some some random guy. Anyway, you get to experience uh, some amazing experiences in the people you meet, the people who are consuming your product. You have a, a fan base that is excited, who wants to show up every single month and read and see more. That's the world of comics. And if you're an editor... You got to you get to sit kind of above a lot of this, and manage it, and guide it, and steer it. That's the world you get to play in. What an amazing world! I'm sorry, that's just that that job would be fun every single day coming into it. And because there's so many comics, so many characters, so many companies in the mix, you're not going to get tired of what you do. You're going to continue to enjoy. Your job, if you get burnt out in, you know, Batman, you can move over to Superman. You can explore that world. And eventually you build up these these huge ideas and these these concepts and these story arcs and everything else. And you get to bring them together and and, and create even, even bigger things. It's an amazing opportunity. And I would wake up in the morning and I'd be like, all right, we're going to shape the world today. So I'm, I'm ready to talk to like, who, what, what emails have I got? What phone calls have I got? Who am I talking to today? Oh, I've. You know, today I get to talk to Donny Cates and I get to hear what he wants to blow up. And then I get to talk to Al Ewing and I get to figure out what obscure reference he wants to go for in his book. And then I'm going to see some pages by Pepe the Raz and I'm excited about that. And then I'm going to go over to social media and I'm going to see the fan reaction to it. And I'm going to, I, I, I feel so excited because I get to kind of tease them about what's coming. But I also got to get some great feedback about what's working and what's not. I mean, they're making my job easier because they're telling me firsthand kind of some of their reactions and yeah, there's some trolls I'm going to have to deal with. There's some people who don't like the comic, and that's that's unfortunate. I'm not going to enjoy that. But by and large, on the whole, it's a great time. What a great job! And I cannot wait to answer those emails. I can't wait. Like I'm sure there's some people out there, some creators, who right now are dreaming up the next pitch, the next concept, the next story arc, the next idea, the next new thing that's going to you know potentially be be, be incredible. And yeah, I'm going to hear some bad pitches too. I'm going to hear some people come in with saying, you know, hey, what if you had Bruce Wayne fathering every child in Gotham and that, that, but it's going to be good for a laugh because I love comics. I mean, what an amazing job being an editor in comics would be. So I'll, I'll pause here for a second and say, obviously, again, the pay sucks. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't be fun. You know, it's hard to stay optimistic when it's like, I can't afford rent this month or, uh, you know. I know at least a couple editors who, unbeknownst to their employers, are moonlighting as bartenders. Uh, and I think one's moonlighting as barista. Literally, I'm not joking. But, um, you know, that, so that, that's, a big, that's a big negative. I, I definitely grant that. But on the whole, um, the, the happiest part of my job as an editor would be communicating, would be talking to these creatives, I have exposure to a wide range of both new and, you know, legend kind of faces uh, who are shaping comics. And that's, that's terribly exciting. Um, I would, I mean, you know, I, 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 every day my email box would be empty because I would answer everything. Because, it, I, I, first of all, it's a job, but it's a fun part of the job. It's not like I'm having to go out and hold a orange sign to tell cars to slow down while they're driving through a traffic uh, stop. It's not like, uh, you know, I, it's, it's not like I'm having to go to McDonald's and clean up the bathroom. I get to sit in a comfy chair and I get to correspond with people who are inventing fantasy worlds that, uh, you know, that, that, that are going to go out into a wide market and thousands of people are going to comment on. And if I do my job really well, it'll be tens of thousands. And if I do a job really, really, really well, it'll be a hundred thousand. I mean, that's, that, that there's, a, that, it's a great job. Hands down, it's a great job. So when I think about what would be fun in comics, yeah, an editor, you, you guys have not made So there really is no excuse for not answering emails, not answering calls, bitching about how it's such a pain in the ass to, uh, you know, to answer a phone call or to answer an email or to, to uh, there's really no excuse for it. And uh, sorry if, if your life is really hard, but you're sitting in a comfortable chair in an air conditioned office on most likely a fairly new laptop 
and you're corresponding with people who have uh, you know pure creative vision and uh, you don't have to clean the bathroom at McDonald's you don't have to hold that orange sign you don't have to uh, you know go out there and dig a ditch today you get to talk to people who are trying to invent the world and so there really is no excuse for bitching about that in public there really is no excuse about uh, endlessly wringing your hands and whining that the fans on Twitter are mean to you. I, I'm sure some are, but enough, seriously enough. You've got a good job. You've got a job that a lot of people would kill for. You've got a job where I'm so, I, I mean, look, I'm sorry. You know, you, you have the opportunity at some point for you to get on the phone with Walt Simonson and he gets to tell you like, uh, you know, his, his big idea for, you know, redefining, you know, the Amazons, uh, for wonder woman. Are you kidding me? There's, there's tons of people who would do that for free, who are doing it for free. You know how many people on YouTube have, you know, under a hundred subscribers, but they're showing up every day to uh, make videos and, and talk about comics and, 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 and beg. I've seen people literally beg creators to come on their shows, to do interviews, to just talk to them. You get to steer their work. What's wrong with you? Seriously, what is wrong with you? I, am, I grant you the pay sucks, and that is a problem. And I've had your back, by the way, editors. I've had your back a lot saying that uh, you deserve to be paid more because you do no doubt about it. And, uh, and I know that, and, and by the way, proofs and plenty, there's been plenty of uh, YouTube critics who have called me a pussy for saying you deserve more money, but I stand by what I, I stand by it. The job deserves more money. Now in their defense, maybe not you, but the job deserves more money. Because if you're going to take this amazing opportunity, this cool, creative job where you get to shape worlds, and it is cool, I, a lot of people are envious of you, including me. Your job sounds great. If you're going to take that, and then you're going to go on to social media and uh, com complain about what a drag it is to answer emails, and that it's getting in the way of the fact that you got totally high last night and ate three pizzas, come on. Come on. This is a great this is a great job for a pretty damn fun product. If if you're listening to this right now going, wow, I, I don't, you know, I, how who could talk to comics this uh, who's talking about comics this way, being fun? I, but the thing is, I guarantee you almost all of you are sitting here nodding your heads because you love comics, like I do. Whether you're a creator, whether you're a fan, whoever you are, you love comics. So can we just can we just not in public? talk about how much our job sucks and we hate it. Can we just, can we just get in? Can we just, can you, can we answer those emails? Can we, uh, you know, help connect the dots? Once upon a time, uh, a lot of Smith used to on Twitter mail out like, here's some stuff coming out next week and here's some little teaser art and here's some little promo stuff and here's some stuff to get hyped up about. It. And it was pretty cool. I, I think, uh, that was great. I, I, it, it helped. I it got fans excited. It was good. It was, it was part of her job. It was, it was, it, it pumped up the books and it was great. And then she blocked like half the people when Trump won. And then, uh, you know, that kind of went, went away. And now, you know, every now you get the announcements get retweeted, but there's no real excitement. It's like the, the least possible effort. I could go down a, a massive list of, you know, the, the various stupid things that, that had happened, but seriously, I'm, I'm here to say the comic editing job is a pretty damn cool job. You're doing a lot of things. You're engaging a lot of people. You're shaping a world for a huge audience. Could be huger. But if you do your job well, it will be. A big audience of people that want to read, want to explore, will dress up like the characters you're editing. I mean, I, come on. What other space do you get that kind of connection? It's really cool. So... Can we, can we, can we, can we level up a little bit? Just a little bit, you know, cut the, cut the silly childish nonsense out. 
enjoy talking to your creators. You know, the, what was it like? Uh, like was it Pete Tomasi? Uh, some of the people over at DC who's like, I, I sent in a pitch and six months went by and didn't hear anything. Uh, J- Jeff Johns. It's like, yeah, I, I'm not really getting any answer back. Jeff Johns is saying this. How in the hell? People like Gary Frank haven't made that comment. Like nobody's getting back to me. What? What? What's wrong? You, I'll, I guarantee you, in, in the current gig I'm doing, I get more emails than the editors. I guarantee it. General day, I get about 800 right now. 800. I'm not talking about the, the perch stuff either. <laughs> the perch is a whole other bucket of email. I guarantee you I'm getting more email. And I'm, I'm filtering, I'm sorting, I'm moving through it. Why? It's my job. If I was, uh, if those emails were from creative luminaries and visionaries, and and we we're scheduling these amazing products to go out in the market, not only would I do it because it was my job, but it, I do it because it's damn fun. Something to think about. Thanks for listening.